Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. So today we are going to take a look at an Invicta figure because we started to take a look at them and then I kind of took a little bit of a break from them and I don't really know why, I just kind of got off track. But this is the Diplodocus and it is a beautiful, beautiful rendition of a vintage Diplodocus. Absolutely amazing looking if you ask me. And definitely one of my favorite Invicta figures just because it overall has a fantastic appearance to it, looking like it's straight out of a book I would have read when I was a child, and if you can get that kind of a feeling out of me with a vintage dinosaur figure, then as far as I'm concerned, and in my eyes, you have succeeded, because it really takes me back to the feeling that I would have had as a child, kind of looking at images of these very large lumbering lizards with their tails dragging on the ground, and Invicta usually always brings that exact look out in their figures, so... This Diplodocus is a beautiful looking figure here, and at first glance I'm sure you can see just that, but you won't truly be able to tell until we get a nice closer look, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our Diplodocus, of course we are not going to look at scientific accuracy in any way, shape, or form because this figure is quite old, and the overall appearance is clearly outdated, but you can see that what is included up here is a really nice old school vintage style of a Diplodocus head sculpt and I love it. I even love that kind of hanging skin there in the neck. Something we saw often associated with sauropods back in the day. You can see the ear sculpted out back there. Some nice detailing there around the eye and the eye itself. You can, if I could turn this, he's kind of long so he's hard to get into frame here, but you can take note of the nostrils up there on the top of the head. You can see some nice sculpt work again on this side of the head sculpt as well. So overall, the head sculpt does look really good. As we start to move down the neck, you can see just a ton of kind of skin wrinkling and skin folding increasing in the skin. As we move down the neck, really beautiful detailing the entire way down until we get down here into the body. And you can continue to see just how incredible the sculpt is overall. I actually have an extra of this Diplodocus and I fully intend on repainting it very soon because just the overall appearance of it I can only imagine will look incredible with paint on it. You can pick up on the shoulder blade here protruding from the skin and just an absolute plethora of skin movement and skin detail here in the stomach region and that is again due to the fact that this very muscular looking front leg is pushing into the body and making the skin react that way so they've done a great job of really portraying the movement in a realistic fashion on this figure and you can also see the rear leg pushing into the body again causing the skin to bunch up there and that's why you see just so much skin wrinkling going on I think it's really nicely done and like I had stated very muscular front leg you can really see kind of just the definition of the entire leg right there you can even pick up on the elbow coming down here the foot sculpt also looks good once again no accuracy with the figure very old school vintage look but the foot sculpt for its time does look really nicely done really nice skin wrinkling skin detail all throughout the entire stomach even coming up into the back you could just see kind of so much going on as far as the skin wrinkling and the really nice skin texture coming back here you can pick up on the hip bone right there moving down here very muscular looking thigh the muscle definition is sculpted out to perfection as we come down the leg you can almost kind of get a sense of like some saggy skin kind of hanging off of the dinosaur just giving you that very large animal feel overall to the figure you can see the kneecap as well and just like the front leg you can really get a sense of the entire structure of the leg and kind of the muscles tensing and everything as it's walking along nice foot sculpt on the rear foot as well no nail paint, no paint at all besides this one gray color, and that's kind of the charm of the Invicta figures. And I think that they did a good job, actually. They normally just kind of pick whatever color it seems, but at least with the Diplodocus, you have a nice gray, which looks natural on a sauropod. And then coming up into the tail, you can see some more very nice detailing, but the skin texture gets a little more fine as we move into the tail, but I think it looks really good the way they've done this. And the tail is very long and then drags on the ground, of course, and has a very nice lizard-like bending going on here at the end of the tail and the way it's kind of just following along the dinosaur which is, again, something we saw always associated with the vintage dinosaur. Looking at the opposing side, you can, of course, see the same type of detailing here of the neck. You really won't see too much difference going on as the Diplodocus only has its head turned slightly to the left. Coming down into the body, you can now see just how much difference there is on this side when it comes to the sculpting of the stomach, skin texture, and skin detailing than what we saw on the previous side because now the legs are spread really far apart and that's stretching all the skin 
here in the stomach region now so you don't see the skin folding or anything going on like we saw on the previous side so really really nice attention to detail on the part of the Invicta line but you can still see quite a bit of nice skin reacting right there to the way the leg is stretching it also the elbow again the shoulder blade is protruding from the skin there nicely elaborated and then we come down you can see the foot sculpt also looks really good over here in general the leg you can once again kind of see like the entire tensing of the leg and just the way the entire leg and structure of the leg is displayed looks really good beautiful skin texture once again in the stomach region very nicely sculpted out here as far as this diplodocus goes you can see the hip bone up here and very nice skin detail the entire way down the leg lots of creasing and wrinkling in the skin very nice muscle definition just like we saw on the previous side the kneecap is present over here as well and then you have that very nice rear foot sculpt just like we saw on every other foot on this dinosaur and then we lead out the length of the tail and the tail again has that sort of softer more finer type of a look to the skin texture over here but also looks really really good so I love this Invicta Diplodocus. So being a Diplodocus you're going to expect some pretty decent length so for a length on our Diplodocus from the head to the tip of the tail it's not too easily noticed from your angle but from mine this actually is at about 20 and a half inches or 52 centimeters in length so very long and the highest point is going to be the neck and for the neck you're looking at about four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters for a size comparison there's Mr. Papo T-Rex the attack pack Colovasaurus and Robert Muldoon back there kind of hanging out by the tail of our Diplodocus and hopefully looking at these figures next to it you should definitely have a good idea of the fact that this is a very long sauropod figure and one of my favorite Diplodocus figures I think of all time would be this Invicta figure not just due to the beautiful sculpt but also due to the very striking size which you can quite clearly see next to these figures. So this Invicta Diplodocus is an absolute beautiful vintage dinosaur figure just like all of the Invicta figures because honestly I cannot think of a single one that I would say is a bad figure especially for their time they were way ahead of their time if you ask me because they were just releasing some incredibly highly detailed sculpts of dinosaurs back when these were released and you can really see that here with this Diplodocus there's just so much detail found throughout this Diplodocus it's quite staggering and again I cannot wait to repaint my other one to really show off that detail and kind of make the detail pop a little more because with the Invicta figures as always you have just this one solid base color they did release a few of their figures that were actually painted but I didn't think the paint jobs on them were really all that great so I personally don't know that I'm actually going to pursue those figures and get the entire set with the painted ones and the kind of non-painted ones I think I'm happy with just that classic Invicta style like we see here and I don't know if the Diplodocus actually was ever released with paint but regardless I'm kind of getting a little off track here the sculpt of the figure is fantastic beautifully showing movement in every area that should be showing movement really nice skin texture really nice detailing in every area of this Diplodocus the paint again just being a solid gray is at least a nice color for a sauropod so that is a plus but at the same time leaves a little bit to be desired if you are a newer dinosaur figure fan and you're used to kind of really nicely done paint jobs on your figures you won't really find that with any of the Invicta figures but what you will find is a very cool figure with a nice base color if you want to paint it yourself but just in general I feel like the solid tone of color on the Invicta figures just is so cool and something that is always associated with the Invicta figures kind of like Takara Tomy has that sort of like association with those ball joints in there figures and Kyoto's mini figures are kind of like a little puzzle that you have to put together like they just have that sort of gimmick and I feel like the gimmick of the Invicta figures was just that one solid color but this Diplodocus again beautifully representing that very vintage style of a sauropod in 100% perfect way so if you do want to pick one of these up I will try my best to link you guys in the description being an old Invicta figure it's long discontinued but hopefully I'll be able to find one for you guys and include a link probably to eBay in the description so make sure you check down there and no matter what whether I find a link or not if you ever happen to encounter this figure or you search one out definitely pick it up it is without question worth a purchase so good luck, happy hunting guys, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.